what's happening at Mercy. Today is Pastor Appreciation. We would like to say thank you to Pastor Murphy and Sister Angie for all the hard work and dedication that they showed to our church. Thank you for being the examples of leadership and dedication to loving God, loving people, and serving others. Grounded Youth Yard Sale and Car Wash is May 11th. Grounded Youth will be selling tables for you to set up in the parking lot and sell your unwanted items. They will also have a donation-only car wash in the parking lot. Proceeds for the yard sale and car wash will go to Youth Mission, Grounded Youth, and the student accounts for trips and activities. Don't miss this opportunity. See a youth staff member for more details. Attention all families, Mercy Kids will be hosting an outdoor movie night May 11th at 8 p.m. in the parking lot of Mercy Church. Come out for a fun night at the movies. Concessions will be available or bring your own. Don't forget your lawn chairs. For more information, see Pastor Brian or Children's Ministry staff member. On Sunday, May 19th, our State Youth and Discipleship Director, Bishop Scotty Hager, will be with us in the AM and PM services. We will also host the District Power Rally Sunday evening at 6. Everyone is invited to attend this youth-led service. Bishop Hager will bring the word, and youth from our district will be leading us in worship and drama. Don't miss it. More information is available at the welcome desk. Attention graduates, our graduation Sunday service is May 26th. We want to recognize you and your accomplishments. See Pastor Brian for more information. The deadline is May 19th. Are you hungry? Want to help our kids ministry? Mercy Kids is hosting a fundraiser at McDonald's on Whiskey Road tomorrow night. Come by and support Mercy Kids from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Drive through or dine in available. Thank you for supporting Mercy Kids. Thank you again for joining us at Mercy Church. If you need anything, please see one of our welcome desks in the foyer for assistance. Don't forget to follow us on social media and check out our website for more activities and weekly updates. Amen. If I can get you to stand to your feet. This is an awesome place to be. we got a lot going on. But today is Pastor Appreciation Day, so we want to honor him today. But before we do that, I'm going to get you to cross the aisles and shake hands, welcome any visitors you see, and thank them for coming to Mercy Church this morning. What the Lord has done, my body. 
Give the Lord play, praise in the house of the Lord this morning. Good morning, everybody. I am so glad you're here today to help us celebrate Pastor Appreciation Day. We'd like to take some time to spend this service this morning to show our love and appreciation to our pastor and first lady. Can you give them a great big hand of applause right now? You know, come on, come on. We can do better than that. Come on. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. Clap like you mean it. You may be seated. And we are excited to have Brother Philip Napier with us today and his wife is sitting in the back, Sister Napier. Let's give them a hand. We are excited that they are here today, and he's got a word from the Lord. We also have another special guest with us today, our children. They're all down front here. Let's give them a hand. Don't they look great? And they right now they have a special presentation they want to do for the pastor and first lady. In case you haven't noticed, our kids love our pastor. They're all excited about being able to come out and just show our pastor how much that we appreciate him. They're going to have a song, and the song is going to play for about two and a half minutes before they actually do any action. They want you to listen very carefully to the words, watch the words. They have great meaning, and it's exactly how these children feel about their pastor. A Leader's Faith by LaRue Howard. A Leader's Faith.
will stay. Your people will be our people. Last year, the children's department gave Pastor Kenny a print like this, except it had all of their handprints on it, and they were, and they were talking of where he leads his hand, will follow where he leads. This year, he's been talking on a series about being the shepherd, and so they wanted him to know that we follow you, and we live by Ruth 116, the entire department. Thank you, guys. Come sit down, please. Let's give them another hand. They did a great job this morning. And let's give all the workers a hand, those who work with these kids. They do an excellent job. Let's let them know how much you appreciate what they do with our children. Did you get your souvenir this morning? The bulletin, got the pastor and first lady on it. Make sure you get a copy. These are collector items. This is the fourth one in the series. We started this, uh, this is the fourth year, right? I got all mine. I'm collecting them. <laughs> they, they're beautiful. Let's give them a hand. They, 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 beautiful couple. At this time, if you would, uh, let's get you, we want to get some gifts to you. Tokens of our appreciation, Sister Rhonda. We so love and appreciate our First Lady and our lead pastor. <laughs> I, I have the privilege of working with them and for them, and it is truly a joy because they love God in the office just like they do up here on the stage, and they're an example for all of us to follow. And Sister Angie, we would like to make this just a small token of our appreciation. We love you dearly. Sandra, if you could hold that just for a moment. I want her to go ahead and open that. And Pastor, if you go ahead and let's see what you got in your baggie. And uh, go ahead and, yeah, just go ahead. It's okay. No, it's not. Let me have all this. You don't need that. Got some gift cards. Everybody needs something from Belt, clothes, and what else you got? Uh-oh. Now, this is painful here. Uh, I would say something, but this is your day. This is your moment, so I'm good. <laughs> it's all for the pastor. It's all for the pastor. Okay, that's enough. You can put it away now. We, we're good. Let's move on. We've got a tight schedule. <laughs> uh, what else you got down there? Oh, that's the biggie there. Vacation. Who needs a vacation? I tell you what, they really need one. So we want to send them on a, a vacation and some time together and time to rest. And and uh, just don't wear that shirt with you. I mean, you, know, you don't wear it in public. No, that's not good. Just keep that in your house. But anyway, we, we love and appreciate you guys. Uh, we're so thankful for the Lord that he brought you together and brought you here. Listen, we're on a journey together. God's taking us somewhere. And I know these are small tokens of our appreciation, but great is your reward in heaven on that day. So we love you. We appreciate you, Pat. <laughs> Let's give them one more hand as we collect all these things and the flowers, these beautiful flowers. Let me grab this for you. Let's give him one more hand. Thank you so much.
morning. God, I thank you that you have given us a new identity. Is anybody thankful for that? Does anybody have a past you're glad to leave behind? A new identity in Christ, the old has passed away. And he has given us a new name. I love that, that verse in, in Revelation. It talks about he will give us a new name. And it will be written on the tablet just for us. And even now on this earth, no longer does he remember our sin. It is in the sea of forgetfulness. But we have been bought with a price. We are new creations in him. Amen. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me.
excited about what God is doing at Mercy Church and the beautiful place that I feel God's called us to is unity. And that's one thing that the enemy will constantly try to rob from you and I. More than anything else, our pastor wants this church to be in unity. Our first lady wants this church to be in unity and every member of the staff. I want to get the ushers to prepare themselves. I want to read this scripture. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 through 13, it says, And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and to be at peace among yourselves. Our offering today is going to do just that. We want to honor our pastor, our first lady today, so all the offering that's in the, the loose offering today will go toward them. We also have a box outside. If you brought cards on the table, just immediately outside those two doors right there, if you want to drop that off. But if our ushers will come and uh, prepare to take up the offering this morning as I pray. Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you for our pastor, whom we all know and love, God, who has given himself to this church who has given himself to each and every individual and families that he serves. Many times when others don't know or don't understand, he's there comforting and caring for those around him. And God, I just pray that this your people today would honor, bring honor where honor is due. And God, that they would establish today that this truly is a day when we make our pastor feel welcomed in this church, loved and cared for. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. How many of you can testify to the goodness of God this morning? And how many of you can say all your life he's been faithful, he's been good to you? I'd like to express for my part, Pastor will be addressing you, but thank you so much for the outpouring of love that you've given us today. And the song that we're fixing to sing is it's relatively new to some people. But when I went over the words to this, I was like, you know, that is exactly my testimony. Every trial, every situation, everything that I've ever walked through in my life, what the enemy even meant for harm and destruction, when he thought he had me down for the count, when I went through years of depression and couldn't get out of the bed, when I went through a broken home and the enemy thought that he had me down then, led me through that valley, led me to this um, man of God right here, connected us together, and could have never looked back in those times, in those days, what God had outlined for us in ministry. Never knew he was working it out. Just following faithfully, putting one foot in front of the other. Times we wanted to question, times we wanted to roll over, times we wanted to lay down, times we wanted to die, but God said, said, keep putting one foot in front of the other. Keep putting one foot in front of the other. Because all my life, he's been faithful to me. All my life, he's had my back. All my life, he's seen something in me that I didn't see in myself. And he saw something in Kenny that he, Kenny didn't see in himself. So I want you to just pay attention to the words of the song that we're singing this morning. And I told the choir this morning, I said, I know it's a new song, but this is one of those songs where you just can't sing the words. you got to feel the words that you're saying this morning. And let it be a testimony to the Lord this morning. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. And all my days. Is that your 
to your feet all over this room. I mean everybody. If you got legs, you got hands, stand to your feet, lift your hands straight up in the air. Sing that again. I mean sing that again. Everybody and I will sing of the goodness of God. Listen, have you ever had them moments in your life where God just supernaturally, divinely came through? I mean, out of nowhere, whew, he came and touched you, healed your body, recovered a child that was astray, healed your marriage in your home with no counseling, just supernaturally. I mean, just supernaturally. One more time, sing that again. I mean, I don't... You have been faithful. Come on, church, hallelujah. And all my life you have been so so. Say it now, and I will sing of the goodness of God. Can we praise Him? I mean, give Him the highest praise. Oh, hallelujah! Hallelujah! Ha, 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 ha. 
Hey, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. All my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so Sing it all day long to you, Lord, and all my life, life you have been so, so, so good. Yes, every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God, and I will sing, and I will sing. of God one more time and I, I will, will sing of the goodness <laughs> of God. Now wave your hands to our King, yes. our Savior, our Redeemer. Let him know how much you love him and appreciate his, his unfailing faithfulness in our lives always. Praise his name. <laughs> Praise your name. 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 Jesus, I love you. Father, I love you. Holy Spirit, I love you. Thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the pastors that are here that love the Holy Ghost, that love Him to move among His people, that you have given them the ability and gifted them to lead and guide this church and this generation to a place beyond what we could ever believe. Let us appreciate that also that you've given them as we honor them today in this pastor appreciation. Clap your hands one more time for Jesus. Secondly, for this man of God and his wife. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Give it up for this choir. My God, have mercy. You make me want to sing all day long. And if you know me, I can do that. God bless you. What am I supposed to do? That's it? Okay. Pastor Kenny said, it's yours. I said, okay, I take that. It's mine. Is this my water? Praise God. I ain't big on drinking after people. That's why I ask. But then Jesus said, if you drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm you. Let me say how much I appreciate the privilege and honor to be here again. I was here the first pastor appreciation, I believe. My memory ain't that bad. And I was here at the first pastor appreciation. We had such a wonderful time. God blessed. 
and I really believe set forth a, uh, an establishment of some uh, of some way to add to what God has, had already said to Pastor Kenny and Sister Angie about Mercy Church. There he began the work, uh, and up to this point, four years now into this pastorate. And I'm telling you, this man and this woman is our friends. They are our friends. I mean, we I'm not just acquainted with this man. This man is my friend. We talk a lot. The other day, I'm going to tell on us. The other day, he and I talked on the phone. How long was that? Five hours. My cell phone got so hot, I had to put it on speaker just to talk. But here's the thing. We didn't talk about, we didn't complain. We weren't talking about the problems. We got to talking about the Word of God. We got to talking about the presence of the Holy Ghost. We got to talking about the gifts of the Spirit. We got to talking about the arrangement of God and how He does things. Next thing we know, man, we, Brother Kenny said, man, I'm hungry and and where are you at? And I said, well, I'm an hour from you. I can't come. And, man, we got to talking. And, you know, like Jesus, when the disciples came to him and said, you know, here, here we, we, we went to town and got you something. He said, I have meat to eat that you know not of. They said, well, what is that? He said, to do the will of my Father. Hallelujah to God. There's some things that will fill your appetite that food cannot touch. There is something that that will just fill your soul and that that will satisfy you that McDonald's and Hardee's and Red Lobster cannot even compare to when you really, when you really connect the kingdom things, it begins to feed that man inside of you that I believe in our world today needs to be stronger, greater established, more more persistent, more, more understanding, more powerful. I believe the church is too lean and too weak. I believe we live far beneath our privilege in God and that that he's given us to live in. Before I go to preaching, let me just hug this man of God's neck. telling you to this denomination and 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 this this community there there are not many pastors teams pastor wife sister Angie is just as much a pastor as brother Kenny they are a team you cannot separate them when he's got joy she's got joy I told her that a while ago y'all when y'all become married the Bible said they become one flesh so whatever he receives, she receives. Whatever comes his way goes her way. But this is a team that God has so sent to this area to deliver it from the bondages that, are, that is holding it back. And if you will obey God's voice and follow this team, you will go deeper into victory and freedom in your life than you have ever been in your life. I promise you that. From, from, that's a word from God. If you will follow them and obey what God has given them to do, you will be blessed and favored like you have never been if you would do what God says. You believe that? Clap your hands and give God some praise again. I love you dearly. I appreciate you and all your team and uh, that is here on this side and on this side. But it, let me tell you something. It is good to have my precious wife with me that has... Stand up right there in the back, little lady. She's still working on that obedient part. We've been married 32 years, been together 35, maybe 36 years. We dated for four years. We got married. She's been in the ministry with me since that time. We have pastored probably two-thirds of our ministry. 
we just retired um, from Sweetwater Church of God. Just um, it's been almost a year now, and uh, due to a lot of physical setbacks uh, in 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 my life, a lot of a lot of things happening physically. I covet your prayers. I really do. I just was amazed a while ago at the anointing helping me to just worship like I did. And I wanted to run so bad, and I may still if I leave this building and just worship God because I'm radical. When it comes to worship, I love to worship God. I love to just get out of my... I don't have a comfort zone. Mine was destroyed. I burned that thing to the ground one day. When I get in his presence, all I want to do is love on him and praise him and sing the high praises, shout and magnify, dance. I mean, hey, you have the ushers have to sit me down. I love him that good because there may come a day in your life that you can't dance and you have better be put some da dancing up. You better, have, you better have praised him before them days come because I've been there. The last year of my life, I've had so many surgeries on my back and my neck. And I'm just thankful this morning that I can lean my head back and say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But I didn't come here to talk about me. No way. I come here today on an assignment to honor this man of God and this woman of God, to love them, to encourage them, to exhort them. Just love on them and hold them up while they go ahead of you and fight the battle and become the front people, which they are. I want you to stand with me. I want to read some verses of Scripture this morning. And, and I, just, I just want you to honor God's Word. Turn with me to, to John chapter 10. John chapter 10. a little story I'll tell you if you can cut these monitors up I would I'll give you I don't know $100 after church just the monitors that's all I need thank you thank you so much I tell you to turn to John my son was little he come in one day and he was having to learn a Bible verse and uh, and, and met a he was he was trying to study it he was real little he said, Dad, I can't find a verse of Scripture. I said, where is it at? He said, it's, I, I believe it's in, in, in John. I, he, says, well, I said, well, he said, I believe it's in, he sa I said, is it in 1 John? He said, no. I said, is it in 2 John? He said, no. I, he said, I believe it's in regular John, did he? So today we're going to read out of regular John. Reg is that all right? Don't you, didn't you love the children down here and, and there? Let me tell you something. I, I Ooh, I could have jumped up and shouted. I told Pastor Kenny, I said, I miss my calling. I should have been a youth pastor. I love our youth. Every time I'm around them, I'm laying my hands on them. I want to prophesy over their life. I want them to be, I want them guided by the hand of God and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. When you see them shouting and speaking in tongues and praising God, you won't have to advertise we got a revival going on. Children don't fake nothing. They ain't learn how to manipulate yet. When it's real, it's real. And when they weeping and crying, their little hands is up praising God. Who you better take note that the Lord is among you. And I sense that on our children of this house here today. John chapter 10. John chapter 10. Let me again say I thank you for allowing me to come and minister the word just very briefly to you because I know you want to go out to church and love on this pastor and his wife a little bit more Jesus said most assuredly verse 1 I say to you uh, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs in some other way the same as a thief and a robber but he who enters by the door somebody shout the door say it again the door is the shepherd of the sheep. Come on now, look at that. Later on he'll say, I'm the, I am the good shepherd. But here Jesus says, I am the door of the sheep. Not just the shepherd, but I'm the door also. 
I'm not just the shepherd behind the door. I am the door in which the other shepherds have to come through to do their job. He said, all the others that have come before me, they didn't come this way. They were thieves and robbers. They tried to dismantle the sheep and shear them and take from them. But he said, I assure you that every shepherd or everyone that comes through the door is the true shepherd. Come on, somebody. Listen. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leaves them out. When he brings out his own sheep he goes before them and the sheep follow him and they know his voice yet they will be by no means follow a stranger but will flee from him for they do not know the voice of strangers put your hand right there in the Bible Heavenly Father help me today with this, this assignment that you have given me to honor this pastor his wife, uh, Lord, his church that he pastors, the beautiful congregation, the beloved that is here, that you have given to this man of God and woman of God to shepherd. God, help me today to deliver what you have given me and that, will it add, that it will add to that that has already been spoken over this house and uh, that has already been spoken over this man and woman of God's life. And that it will be one more brick in the wall to build and not to tear down. That is my assignment today, God. Help me to deliver it today with courage and faith. And I praise you right now and give you all the glory for the outcome of it. Because we ask these things in the name that puts hell on red alert when we say it. That name of Jesus. And everybody shouted. You can be seated. Before you see to turn to two people and say, you didn't make a mistake, you're in the right place today. Praise God. I said praise God. One of my members one time years ago said, man, you got a lot of notes. I said, they ain't for you, they for me. Don't worry about notes. They're for me. I thought about Pastor Kenny, Sister Angie, and I <laughs> done a little study on the name Murphy. Murphy is one of those names that comes from Ireland. Ireland. If you don't know this brother ain't Irish, this brother's full Irish. And how I know that is when he talks about something and it really gets on his nerves, his head turns red. He gets fidgety. He gets excited. I thought, man, that's Murphy. But I'm going to check. In Ireland, there are more than 50,000 people that go by the name Murphy. You could start a satellite church in Ireland. Man, I'm telling you, you'd go like crazy. Just on your last name. Murphy. What does the name Murphy mean? Well, it's got two meanings. <laughs> I'll tell you the spiritual one first. <laughs> Murphy means sea warrior. Sea warrior. It's almost like you derived his name from Viking. One who wars in the sea. One who takes charge of the waters, so to speak. And I look at Brother Kenny at times and I realize there, there is a warrior underneath that cloak of the shepherd, that clothing that God has given you, that calling. Underneath the tenderness of the, of the shepherd, there is a warrior. Someone who fights for the sheep. Someone who will come to the hospital at 1 o'clock in the morning if you call and say, I'm, I'm having a bad night. I mean, the enemy is in here. There, there is a demon trying to take away and steal my joy. Thank God for men who will still come and hold you by the hand and say, devil, you are a lie in the name of Jesus. 
One man t told me the other day in a store, he said, I got a friend who's a member of another church. And uh, he said, he said he went through open heart surgery, and he said when he did, he said, he said, Pastor, let me ask you this. He said, he said his pastor texted him and asked him how he was doing. He said, do you, you text folk and ask them how they were doing after open heart surgery? I said, not but one time. I said, because after that time, they're going to find themselves another church, and they need to. You need a shepherd in your life. He may not come to every birthday party you have. He might not come to every time you buy a house or have an open house, but you need him when, you, when you're having a bad day in your life and you're in that hospital or you receive bad. Now, let me tell you something. I know this man of God does it because he and I went through the hospital together and crossed paths at times and talked about the people that were in there, and I thank God for a man who had just come right there and war with you and not worry about what no one else is thinking. Are you glad about a pastor who would just be right there? You live long enough, you'll get in that hospital, you'll be glad to see. When I was, uh, when I was a pastor, some of my leaders told me one time, said, Pastor, we want to get to where you don't have to visit no more. That's what they told me. Well, won't you just pray and study? I thought, my Lord. And I said, that's awesome. That's good. And I thought about delegating all of that out. And I told him one day, I said, let me ask you something. I visited every one of you in the hospital that said that. That was on my council. And I said, let me ask you, when you're in the hospital, who are you wanting to see the most, the doctor or the nurse? He looked at me and said, I want to see the doctor. I said, listen, I can send you all day long, but ain't nothing like me walking through that door. And them sheep saying, if he's just here for five minutes, I get to see my pastor. He took the time to come visit with me. Am I right? I'm glad for a pastor like that. Are you? I know you are. Murphy, Sea Warrior. Then there's a second. Hmm. Your name means potato. When I read that, I thought, I put some on the other end of, you know, potato head. You know, I, I, just, I just wanted <laughs> to add my interpretation in that. I said, yay, I feel that lost potato head. I, no, I love him. I can say that to him because I love him. He can say that about me. Potato. Hmm. Then there's, I thought Murphy, Murphy. Then there's Murphy's Law. You ever heard of Murphy's Law? Have you ever been around this man? This man at time, I feel like, has had a touch of Murphy's Law. Whatever will happen that's bad will happen sooner or later, it seems like, around Pastor Kenny. But that's not true. The Lord guides his life. I believe that. Then there's Murphy's Bed. Let's stay away from Murphy's bed. Don't turn red on me. Then there's Murphy's door. Have you ever heard of Murphy's door? You've never heard of Murphy's door. God, I'm preaching something you ain't never heard of. Hallelujah. Murphy's door. People have them in their home. You know what a Murphy's door is? There, it is a bookshelf. It is a door that is designed to be a bookshelf. It, it, it's, it's, it, look, it appears to be one thing, but it's actually another thing. It's a bookshelf in a house that is actually a door. When you walk up to it, all you see is a bookshelf, but there's a secret passage behind it. That's called a Murphy's door. Murphy's bed the same way. It folds up into the wall. You have more room. I thought, man, there's a lot that, I wish my name had a lot of things in it. Mine's just an appear. It's French. That's all it is. You are blessed, my brother. I thought about some other things that Jesus is saying here. Let's go to him. I'm just telling you, that's kind of comical. I want to go to the word. Jesus is talking about the door. Everybody say the door. He said everyone that passes through that door is true. They are qualified to shepherd, to be the men 
or the woman of God, in this case both, qualifies them to shepherd my sheep because they have not tried to do it in the way that, that isn't right. Here he said there are those that have come, but they've tried to go in another way. I'm amazed that the men and the women throughout this nation who call themselves shepherds who are not true shepherds. It is a occupation and not a calling. If you took the money and the prestige and all that away, you probably would find them doing something else. It is a reminder to us that not everyone who wears a suit and a tie and totes a Bible is a true shepherd of Almighty God. We have to be aware of those things. And Jesus is warning us and telling us some information and revealing to us about true shepherds. And he says, he talks about the door even before he calls himself a shepherd. He said, the good shepherd, he said, I am the door of the sheep. When you think about a door, you think about framework. The, 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 the door has framework. Windows have framework. And there's only four sides. Everybody say four sides. There's only four, there's only four things that involve a door or a window. How many believe that there are special things in the Word of God that deal numerically with what God is saying? Numbers have a lot to do with what God is trying to say. How many believe that? Numerically, the study of biblical numerology. It is out there. I study it. It's, it's an amazing thing how you see numbers show up all the time. And it is it's seasonal. It's like it doesn't happen until that calendar date. You look at the number and then it matches what is going on in that calendar date. Now, I'm not telling you that it happens always, but there are times that God reveals that to the church. And then you can put two and two together. Get that. Two and two together makes... We are in the fourth year, am I right, of your leadership here. Number one, it represents and means unity. Number two is the number of division. Number three is the number of unity. Number four is the number of structure and a door. Number five is the number of grace. Number six is the number of man. Number seven is the number of completion. Number eight is the number of new beginnings. Everything that God does, at times, he reveals numerically what he is meaning by that. Everyone who passes through the door is the true shepherd. It is the establishment of what God is doing. The science and study of the numbers mentioned in the Bible is known as biblical numerology. Let me just say this. The number four that symbolizes God, get this, is setting all things in order. It is the setting forth of all things in order, in order. Everybody shout in order. How many knows that God's house has to have order? Order. God's a God of order, not chaos, not confusion. He's a God of peace and order. Hallelujah to his name. Four great elements of the universe, namely, get this, are comprised of earth fire, water, earth, fire, air, and water. The four regions of the earth are north, south, east, and west. Everything, you, you look at four, and it's amazing that it is the structure that God uses, that number to structure and to put things in order. Four divisions of the day, morning, evening, noon, and midnight. It is the structure of the day. It is the structure of the seasons and the universe. Everything has an order because God has placed it like that. It is when men get in there and try to rearrange that order that we get in trouble. There are four seasons, summer, 
fall, spring, and winter. Four sides of a square that make up the variations. There are four phases of the moon. I mean, think about it. There, there's so much to do with this number four. And it is not by chance or happenstance that I am here and that you are here and that God has chose that year to establish something, to do the framework of establishment. What does God do when he has established the framework. Well, let's just let me just share a few more things. Four sides of that square, four phases of the moon. All these are material creations by God Almighty, which were followed by the fifth and sixth day. They are followed by the fifth and sixth day. The four days he structures the universe. He structures the earth. He calls those things that are not as though they were. He puts them in place and he frames it up. What happens after the fourth? Whew. What happens after the fourth year? Somebody look at somebody else and say, well, I wonder what happens after the fourth year. We are in the fourth year. What happens the fifth year and the sixth year? What is God going to do? I'm glad you asked. following the fourth, year, the fourth day of creation and the fifth and sixth day come, they are marked. Hear me now. You can read this in Genesis. They are marked by the furnishing of people of the planet and the creatures to be put in it and it is marked by the giving of life. Whoo! Prophetically, what is that meaning to us today? What does this mean prophetically? Now, I've got to be careful here because if I don't, I'll just get out in another zone and I've got some more things I want to say. But here's what I believe is going to happen. And I, I know you're recording me and this is being recorded on video and, and, and I'm glad, hallelujah to God. This is what I believe. You will know a prophet by, by if his prophecy comes to pass. Am I right? Come on now, I, am I right? I said, am I right? Hallelujah. Here's what I believe. I believe that Brother Kenny Murphy and Sister Angie Murphy are in the fourth year of their pastorate. I believe that up to this point, without a doubt, and Brother Kenny shared some things with me, but not everything, but I dare say that for the last four years, it's been tough. It's been hard reestablishing people, leaving people, coming, people happening. I mean, things are going on. The framework is being done. God is rearranging some things. Matter of fact, what is happening, God ain't putting things out of order. He's putting things in order. He is putting things in order. And he's been structuring that thing for the last four years. So today, hallelujah, you are in your fourth year, which tells me that the fifth and sixth is coming. What does that mean to Mercy Church? What does that mean to South Aiken community? What does that mean to this area? What does that mean to you and your children and your offspring? What does that mean to your family that is here and distant? What does that mean to everyone around? I'll tell you what it means. When God gets through structuring something, his desire is to fill it with what he desires. He puts people in it. He puts things in it. He desires to fill that structure that he has created because there is order now there, and now he can fill it with people. He can fill it because now he's He's done the framework. I wish I had a door I could walk through. Matter of fact, let me walk through this. Yeah. This is the four years right here. Like this door. Now, everybody comes to Mercy Church. God is order. He's putting things in order. Framework is there. The door. The door. The door. Everyone that... Everyone that's true, everyone that 
is going to go out into pasture and, and serve and, 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 and get healed and get, get delivered and get set free and, and come under the rule of Almighty God. You've got to pass through the door. Am I right? Framework has been done. So now in Mercy Church, the Lord has built a door where everyone can pass through. And to keep going through. Because see, here's the thing about the door. Once the door's built, the devil cannot tear it down. Once there is a portal, once there is a door in a place that has been structured by God and ordered, man, let me tell you, the drunkards can walk through it. One way, and when they walk back out it, they're another way. Drug addicts walk in one way, whoo, and they go back out the door another way. I'm telling you, prostitutes walk in, my God, down and discouraged, and they walk out the other way. And they say, my God, what is happening? God has so framed it so that it's not you doing anything. It's the fact that they are passing through the door. And Jesus said, I am the door of the sheepfold, and if you pass, you must come through me when you pass through. So Jesus is saying this basically, I have built, I have built a doorway which is me, my own presence among you for four years because this under shepherd of God is serving the upper shepherd who is God. And through his prayers and yours, you have allowed God to build the doorway which everyone is going to pass through. Let me tell you, not every church is interested in the door of the sheep. Not every church wants them to enter in by the door. Oh, no. They, they trying to get them in some other way. But let me tell you right now, coffee clubs and donut sales will not save the lost in these last days. Are y'all hearing? Now, I, I, I'm going to try to behave. I'm going to do as best I can. But let me tell you right Right now, I am glad for an assembly where I can still come and worship God and no one looks at me funny and says, well, I, I, I don't want them around. You don't know where I came from when I come through that door because when I passed through it, hallelujah, I was down and depressed and suicidal. I was on drugs, but I went through that door because somebody dared to be a one, hallelujah, in a house of worship. And when I passed through that door, I went in one way, Ooh, but I came out another way. Uh, I come in what? How? I come in one way and then I passed out another way. How many can remember that day? You come in one way and then uh, all of a sudden you realize I ain't the same. I, I went in some while ago that was greater than me, bigger than me, larger than me, and I, I have been freed. I have been, I have been totally freed and unshackled by the power of Almighty God. If he's let you last this long to the fourth year to design and frame and order this place, Surely he's God that says, now that I have ordered it, I will fill it with people of all kinds. That's why it's called Mercy Church. That's why it's called Mercy Church. Because every creed and color and nation needs to know what his mercy is is all about they need to know there's a place I can go that they're not going to judge me because I've been living in a lifestyle but they're going to pray me through and walk me through that door of deliverance and when I get through it I'm going to realize I'm glad I came here hallelujah and now I have been delivered and saved by the power of almighty God hmm in the Bible, there are four Gospels. Synoptic. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Around the throne, there is surrounded by four beasts. 
signifying the worth of the number four. Four beasts that are around the throne of God right now, they are there at his bidding. They are there created by God. Why did God, do, why wouldn't he create six? Why just leave it at four? Because four is not only the structure of his house, it's the structure of glory. Jesus said, pray. Ooh. Whatsoever you bind on shall be bound in Hey, they structure here. If it's here, it's because it started there. If we have it here, God is always interested in duplicating what he's got there down here. Hallelujah to his name. He wants what's there in here. What is in there? Well, there's joy, unspeakable and full of glory. What is there? His presence constantly. What is there? His glory is subsiding and illuminating and permeating every inch of heaven itself. What is there needs to come in here? What is there needs to get in here what is up there in glory need to get down inside of here so that we can serve God faithfully give him a praise right now the shape of the new Jerusalem is come on somebody is for what square why you want to build it God I went to school long enough to learn that. I draw a box. I can count the lines, at least up to four. Four is an important number for me. It's a good number. Four. It's a, it, the, the house of God, the city of God is going to be four square. Hmm. Why would God build such a thing? Order. Structure. Do you know what he's doing with that building, four square? What is he going to put in that building? That city. Us. He's designing it to fill it. 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 He ain't going to be happy until it is filled with people and worship us. Hallelujah to his name. He has designed it here. Somebody shout, design it, God. Design it here at Mercy Church. And then fill Mercy Church with every color and creed and nationality. Fill it here, oh God. Let the children come. Let them sing. Let them prophesy. Don't let them wait till they're 16. Let them do it when they're four and five years so let them preach hallelujah under the power of God frame this place and then fill it with your glory and your people did I mention that there are four angels that stand the Bible says at the four corners of the earth Think about it. what did God say I mean why not six corners of the earth Four corners. Four is an interesting number. Are you learning anything this morning? Four. Four. Hmm. I could go on and talk about Noah's life, but I'm not. In Noah's time, there were four generations, basically. It says this about his generation. That in Noah's day, there was tongues, nations, families. Tongues, nations, families. Families, tongues, countries, and nations, what it said. Families, tongues, countries, and nations. I thought that's interesting that God didn't say anything else. He said that in fours. It was interesting. Mm -mm -mm -mm. The fourth book of the Bible is what? Numbers. <laughs> well, it ain't put in order, Brother Napier. Don't you tell me that it's not put in order. Fourth is a... It is the continuation of Exodus, which is the third book. It is, it is a continuation of the, get this now, fourth number, the number fourth in numbers is the continuation of the wilderness travels. 
It is the time, Pastor Kenny, that the church that day was going through the wilderness of the hardest times of their life. It was there that they just, they, they didn't settle. They just kept walking and they kept going and they kept looking for Sinai mountain range. It was there that they learned how to survive, hallelujah, on the bigger thing, on the meager things of life. It, they learned how to survive and they learned how to trust God to guide them. Come on, somebody. When, as you've been coming to church here, have you felt like that you've been going through a wilderness and we're along with them that, hey, things has been tough. There's been order being set, but my God, it's been dusty and dry. And at times I felt like I've had no water, that we've been praying for rain and there's been no water. I never forget one day a woman come to me. I can't tell you it was in the fourth year. It might have been. I wasn't paying too much of attention about numbers then, but she came to me in service at the church one day very prominent woman and she said let me tell you something Pat she was mad she said let me tell you something she said my life was fine till I joined this church I said what do you mean she said ever since I joined this church it's been hell on earth for me I thought well what you want me to say give you a gift card and get you some gas some chicken at Bojangles I don't know what to tell you she said it's been hell on earth she said my marriage my business my children, they getting sick and everything else. She said, it's like when I decide to come here and get hooked up with you and the vision of God and this church, she said, it, it, it's been, it's like a wilderness, it's been hell on earth. She said, I need an answer from God. I said, okay, I'll get you one. That's exactly what I told her. I said, you be back in my office tonight at six o'clock for church, I'll give you one. She said, I'll be here. Went home that night. I said, I started to lay down. I said, you ain't, got to, you ain't got to pray about this. I got an answer. This is what I told him. This is what God told me. So help me. He said, you tell her that all those troubles were coming anyhow. And the reason I put her here so she could survive the troubles that was coming because where she was, they didn't believe in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> they didn't believe in the moving of the, y'all ain't hearing me. They didn't believe in the moving of the Spirit. They didn't believe in trusting God. They didn't believe in the Word of God being the preeminent thing in their life. But here, hallelujah, she could, she could survive. And I'm saying that to this church here at Mercy under the leadership of Pastor Kenny. Hey, you, it may appear that you might got more trouble, but that ain't the fact that the fact of it is that trouble was coming that devil was about to blindside you but God put you here so you could have a shepherd hallelujah and a first lady and a team that could walk with you through the trouble and the wilderness until you could get you a drink of water at the end hallelujah is this all right I'm doing my best hallelujah hmm it's the fourth book. Numbers deals with three things. Don't you ever forget what I'm about to tell you. Numbers deals with three things. I'm, I'm talking to the Mercy Church now. And I know some may hear this somewhere else, but I'm talking to you this morning, hearing me under the leadership of this pastor. It deals with three things. You want to know what they are? Whether you want to or not, here they come. Number one, Numbers deals with, the framework deals with the wilderness travels of the people of God and the church deals with, that's where you at right now. God is framing it. He's structuring it. We've un established that. Right now, this is what God says. Exactly what, he, what the whole thing was with Numbers. Number one, the preparation of the old generation to inherit the promised land. That was his number one goal. I want to, pre I want to pr prepare the elderly people, the people that have been here, the people who trusted me. I want to prepare them for the promised land. If you're here and you're old 55, shout amen. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Boy, y'all clap real loud. Listen to what God, just listen to what happens. They are, it is the number one thing, preparation of the old generation to inherit the promised land. Number two, the failure of the old generation to inherit the promised land. If you remember halfway into the change, 
halfway into the change. Boy, it's getting tight but right in here now. Halfway into the change, the walk, the wilderness, the older generation that God loved and still loved said, well, hold on a minute here. I'm not sure we want to go this route, Pastor Kenny. Mm. I like my seat with my name on it back there. Glory to God. What do you mean letting that that other person have my parking spot out of how dare you you know how much money I put in this church in the building fund praise God lights are too bright they ain't bright enough too cold too hot all they can see is what's around them. They can't know. They can't see any longer what God is wanting to do. The devil sidetracks us. We look at the paint, carpet, the suit you got on, suit I got on. Get your mind off of that. God ain't interested in that. He's interested in loving you and helping you, taking you into the place he so desired. That's why he brought us this far. But unfortunately, in the second thing, he, th there was a failure. There was a failure of the old generation to inherit the promised land. Third thing, the preparation and training of the new generation to inherit the promised land. That's all numbers have to deal with. The framework of God. Hey, look, I want you all to go. But how many knows all will not go? I'm talking to y'all this morning. This is Pastor Appreciation Day, and the best thing I can do for him is to, is to let you know that I support him. And if you support him and Sister Angie through this wilderness and the framework that God is doing, you're going to pass through a door of deliverance and joy and peace and overflowing abundance. But if you decide not to go, then there is somebody going to take your place, and they're going to go right in there. And the blessings that you could have had and the inheritance that you could have received Someone else may possibly receive it. Mm. Is this okay? Mama. You got to pass through the door of deliverance. Pastor Kenny has went through that door. Sister Angie has went through that. That qualifies you. That qualifies you to be a shepherd. The door of deliverance. John 8, what it is, John 8, 33, I believe. We sung about it. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. You remember the day you got saved? Come on. You remember that? How many years ago was that? I put you on the spot, didn't I? 38 years ago. You got saved. When did you get the Holy Ghost? Where was you at? Really? Hallelujah to God. Receive the Holy Ghost. Passed through the door. Got delivered. How, can you, you know you got delivered from those things that was holding you back from becoming the man of God that you are today. Are you right? Am I right? You passed through that door. Now that you threw that door, you and Sister Angie, you said it a while ago, God so selected y'all, didn't even know it was coming. But here you sit today, hallelujah, in the framework of God, not knowing, my God, this team is going to lead not only a church, but a generation of people that comes, my, 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 into the presence and kingdom of God. And I've got to hurry. You've, you have passed through the door of deliverance. That qualifies both of you to be a shepherd in front of Almighty God in his his stead in his absence he's coming back but you are his shepherd here now to shepherd his sheep and look over them I believe that do you believe that say amen do you believe that say amen again they pass through the door of deliverance but then the second door you got to pass through Pastor Kenny is the door of departure what you mean departing you have to leave something 
when you get delivered, you have to depart. That's not an easy thing because everybody ain't going to go with you. They're not going to see it quite like how God showed it to you. You, you, you got to depart. Touch your neighbor and say, sometimes you just have to depart. You, you, you get delivered and you have to depart. Let me tell you something. The old folks years ago, they walked away from houses and land and people and nations and, and cousins and friends and mamas and daddies because they didn't understand the way of holiness. But holiness was realer than anything else, more real than anything else that they knew of and had come into their lives. So they decided, hey, I've got to leave in order to receive all that God has for me. Didn't mean they didn't love them. It just meant they loved God more. Hallelujah. They loved him more. Some people can't understand that. When you're delivered, then comes the door of departure. I got to walk out. I got scripture. Hebrews 11 and 8. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out. To go out to the place which he would receive. Go out to the place which he would receive. Go out to the place in which he would receive. Let me say it again. Go out to the place in which he would receive. What, it, what God had for him wasn't where he was at. He had to go out to receive it. He had to depart. He had to cut loose. Hmm. As an inheritance. And, and it says this, and he went out not knowing where he was going. I remember we used to pray in our council leadership. Something tough would come. We'd all pray, God, show us what to do. Lord, show us where to go. Lord, give us a word from you. Lord, move upon somebody to prophesy and clear the air. And I know a lot of times I sense that God wasn't going to say nothing. He wasn't going to show us nothing. He wasn't gonna, he wasn't, we were going to have to go out by faith. Not knowing where we was going. Pastor sat in my office sometime back. He said, I ain't going nowhere that God tells me. I said, well, rip that part out in your Bible in Hebrews 11. He said, what's that? I said, where he went out not knowing where he was going. I said, you said you got the same faith Abraham had. He bowed his head. He said, forgive me. <laughs> I said, sometime you have to leave. You have to depart. You have to embrace something that the generation before you had not embraced. And that ain't easy to do, Pastor Kenny. It takes faith to do that. But I'll tell you this, there's a reward with that. Whew, he went out looking for a city, the Bible said, that hath foundations. Come on, somebody. But the, let me tell you, he went out looking for a city, and guess what he found? He found God. <laughs> That's amazing that he went looking for one thing and he found God. It's amazing that when God leads you out and you depart, he gives you more than you ever thought you could receive out there where you're going. You've had to depart from some things. You had to go out on your own, faith. Whew. Prayer make you do that. You get in here and get hot in prayer. Oh, Lord. Whoo. Man, that sweat begins to fall and mingle with your tears. You get happy. You get excited. And all of a sudden, the Lord said, we're going out. Prayer won't keep you in the same place. If you pray, you have to expand. Come on, somebody. Prayer causes you to expand your faith and believe for greater things. Then it, when you go through the door of departure, then comes the door of demand. The demand is put upon you. You know about demand? Oh, yeah, you do. It's the demand. The Bible says, The elders who are, are among you, I exhort. I, who am a fellow elder and witness of the sufferings of Christ, also a partaker of the glory that, that will be revealed. He goes on to say in, in verse 2, He said, Shepherd the flock of God which is among you. Hmm. Serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly, not for dishonest gain, but eagerly. Do, do, are we hearing that? Don't serve the body, he says, with compulsion or for dishonest gain. He ser said, serve them willingly. C can anybody tell me, and, and, and th does this man and woman serve willingly? eagerly with no gain and you better believe it 
and I'm standing here as a witness. Sister Rhonda said it a while ago. They're the same in the office as they are right here. And hell, let me tell you something. You can't find that everywhere. Am I right? You cannot find that everywhere. Hello? The door of demand is upon you. That weight. You remember when it came on you, don't you? You better believe it. Has it left? That means you demand. That means you demand. Just because, just because days don't go good when that feeling of, man, that burden to be what you are is there, you have to just suck it up and hit, pick your head up high and keep on rolling. Am I right? Then there's the door. If you can make it through them, then you make it to this. Stand on your feet. Then you make it to this fourth door. This is what's coming. You want to know what's coming? This is what's coming. You go through the fourth door. The fourth door is the, do the door of deluge. Not delusion, but deluge. Deluge is a, is a comment or a word that describes an abundance of water. An abundance. A copious amount is another word. A copious amount of water is coming. What do you mean by that, Pastor? Well, let's look at the Scripture. Hmm. Let me read it to you. It's found in Joel. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done marvelous things. Can you say amen to that? Do not be afraid, you beast of the field, for the open pastors are springing up. For the open pastors are springing up. And the tree bears its fruit. And the fig tree, the vine, yield their strength. Be glad then, you children of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God. For he has given you the former rain ah, faithfully. And he will cause the, the rain to come down for you. The former rain and the latter rain in the first month. That describes the deluge. The former rain and the latter rain in the first month. They should be six months apart. But God said, because I love you and because you please me and because I've set things in order, I'm going to send two rain periods. I'm going to send them both in the first month. You better get ready, get your buckets, get your, get your wheelbarrows ready. I'm going to send all the rain that you can handle. God is structuring it. Listen to this. Check this out. You don't think four ain't important? Verse 25 says, So I will, I will restore to you the years. I will restore to you the years. Touch your neighbor and say, God's going to restore. I will restore to you the years that the, number one, swarming locusts have eaten, crawling locusts have eaten, consuming locusts have eaten, and the chewing locusts have eaten. Four. Each one of them describes a level of destruction. I ain't got time. But four things he said they have destroyed. Them four things have destroyed and emaciated everything. He said, but my people will never be put to shame right on down. You know what happens after God structures? that takes away, restores. We think sometimes that restoring is the revival. God has restored me. No, that's the framework to get you ready for the next part of this verse. Are you ready? Get, look what he says in verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. You, you know, it's amazing that we don't look at God and his structure Sometimes revivals come, and as they come, it's not meant as the deluge. It's meant to restore and to reconstruct and to form. And, and then after he forms something, he will feel that something. I feel like that in the fourth year and through these years, you have been in the forming stage. God's been forming. But I'm believing... The year to come and the year after that is going to be the filling stage where everyone that comes, you won't have to, you won't have to tarry with them. 
and, and pray for them till three o'clock in the daytime, you're just going to look at them and say, be filled. And they're going to say, I receive it. And out of their mouth is going to flow tongues of liquid fire. They're going to leave here and go out, tell some other lost sheep, hey, come and see what I found. You know what they're going to do? They're going to walk through the door like they did and say, my God, somebody, somebody help me because I'm being filled. I'm being filled. I'm being filled. I'm being filled. Is that the kind of church that we have here? Is that the kind of church that you want? Well, let me tell you, that's the kind of pastors that you have is the kind that want you in order and constructed and reconstructed Constructed and restored and then filled with the presence, power, and love of God. Hmm. Lift your hands straight up near. Say this with me. Heavenly Father, this is our church that you give to us this is our harvest field I am part of that harvest I have walked through this door and if I go out it will bring someone else in I will stay here I belong here I feel your love here your presence has changed me here this is it. Help me to be more for this congregation. Help the gifts that's inside of me to mature, to manifest, to help the body in Jesus' name. Point your hand toward this man and this woman. Say this with me. Now that I am here, now that I am a part of this man and this woman's ministry that God has so faithfully and supernaturally put here, they're going to help me and they're going to help heal me. I will listen to their words. I will obey what they say in the Lord. I will hear them words of song. Woo. I will worship when I am called upon. Mm. I will lift my hands in this sanctuary continually. I will dance without being told to. Hallelujah. I will praise you, Lord, because I know you have called me here. This is the place that you have framed and ordered to be the place where I am restored. And now that I am here, I'm looking for the next year of filling. <laughs> I'm looking for the next year of miracles and healing. I'm looking for my family to come and my offspring to come and walk through the door that you have put here. I will come alongside this shepherd and this first lady and I will hold them up all the days that I live because they belong to God and they belong to us here in this church we will not talk negative we will not speak in a negative manner to them or towards what God has given them but we will pray with them and for them that the things that God has said, he will continue and he will finish until the day of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We trust you and believe it. How many believes that you're in the right place? Come on, let me see your hand. You're getting healed and you're getting something from God right here. This is your portal. This is your window. This is your time. Clap your hands and give our God. Come on.
turn around and shake somebody's hand and hug their neck. Don't leave. Tell them you're with me and I love you. This is the framework of God. This is the time. He's restoring us and he's going to fill us. He's going to fill us in Jesus' name. There's something I want us to do before we go. There's two things. First of all, I want you to remember Brother Richardson. Uh, Sister Richardson passed away last night, about midnight. And uh, I got the call and uh, went up there with them. She was in uh, PCU in Aiken Hospital. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, his son, his daughter, his granddaughter was up there. And uh, for those that don't know Brother Richardson, he sits right over here on this front row. And, his, and uh, Sister Richardson was in a wheelchair. And they just sit right by this door right over here. So I hope, hopefully that if you didn't know who I'm talking about, you do now. I want you to be praying for him. Brother Richardson, uh, uh, he, he's gone through a lot in the last five, six years. Sister Richardson has been a sick lady. And, uh, and he's gone through a lot. But I want you to be remembering him. Uh, this week uh, anybody's ever buried somebody that you've been with he said I've been with her 55 years and so uh, he's, he's going to kind of feel lost for, for a little bit uh, and so I want you to remember him and I want you to be praying for him be praying for his, his son his daughter their grandchildren I want, so I, that's the first thing I want you to do I want you to remember that uh, also, I want you to know that tonight, 6 o'clock, we're going to have prayer. If you, if you know who you are, you come and pray. I want you to come, 6 o'clock tonight. But what I'd like for us to do, uh, I appreciate uh, Brother Philip up here. He's, he's, he's been a pastor. He, he still has an evangelist heart. He's an evangelist at heart. He's a prophet. And God has used him mightily. Uh, the devil don't like it. And, uh, but he's been my friend for a long time and he believes in the power of prayer and this is what I want us to do I'd like for Brother Philip to come I'd like for Sister Sonia to come I want you to come right now here and I want my elders, my councilmen I want us to gather around him and I want to anoint him with oil we believe in this the Bible says is any sick among us this man has been sick and, and, and I don't know why other than the fact that the devil don't like him. Don't like him. Uh, but I'm believing today that God's going to touch his body, going to touch his neck, uh, going to touch his back, going to touch his knees, going to touch his heart, going to touch diabetes. I, I believe God's going to touch him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Going to touch Sister Sonia. You're going to minister to this couple. I'm telling you, God placed him on this earth for a purpose and he's not done with him and I believe that and, and I want us if you'll come come on sister son y'all come right here I want the elders together and, and then I, I want the congregation if you just stretch your hand toward him and toward them we're going to anoint them and we're going to join our faith with them that's scripture the Bible says where two or three are gathered together is touching any one thing in agreement we're going to agree today. I want to thank you for your appreciation to me. I, I, I do. I love you. I, if, if, if I failed you in any kind of way, I, I apologize. Stand before you today, I apologize. Um, if, I, if I failed you in any kind of way, if I've missed a hospital visit, if I've, if I've missed calling you or, or coming to you, or uh, I, I, I want to apologize. I it's not my intention to hurt nobody in this church. It's my intention to help you, to shepherd you. Sometimes I'm, I'm overwhelmed. I, I, I say, God, Lord, you got to help me to do what I'm supposed to do and to let me know what I'm supposed to do and, and, and do it best I can. So I, I, I just want to tell you that I love you today. This is, it's always an awkward day. Pastor appreciation is always an awkward day. But I, before I leave here today, I want to tell you that I appreciate you. And I love you. And I want to be here for you. And I want us all to walk through that door frame. 
Jesus is the door. Amen. He is the door. He stands at the door of your heart, knocks, open up, he'll come through your door. Amen. Praise God. They put the blood on the door. He is the blood. He's the door. They went in one way. Praise God. They, they had peace on the inside. When they walked out the door, they were delivered and left their bondage through the door. I, I praise God. I want, but I want, I want to just tell you I love you and I appreciate you. Praise God. I want this church, man. I mean, I, I, I've been scared to tell people what I've seen in, in the spirit about this church being so just filled before Brother Moss passed away, years before he passed away, he said, I had a dream that a net came down, filled with fish, all types of fish, every color, every, every shape, every size. He said, when it hit, the net opened, and people started standing up of every nation, of every, every culture, of every color, every creed, just like what Brother Philip had, had spoke today. And that's what we've been desiring. Listen. Just send them in, God. Send them in. Poor, rich, black, white, brown. Listen. Culture. If you're, if you're racist, you need to get saved. Because Jesus is going to send them in. And we're going to love them all. Amen. I love you. I want you to stretch your hand toward this man and his wife. Father God, today, Lord, we anoint this couple, God. I lay hands on my, on my friend, God. He's been a minister to me, God, over the years. <laughs> today, God, in Jesus' name, Father Lord, this is scriptural, God. This man believes in it. I believe in it. Every person that's laying hands on him believes in God. We join our faith together today, God, in agreement that he is healed. Oh, in Jesus' name, I lay hands on him and I say, heart, heart be healed in Jesus' name. Every passageway to this heart be open. Hey, oh, be gone, crack. Open up the doorways to this heart so that the blood will flow. Shatake, Riondaboho. I rebuke you, diabetes, in the name of Jesus. I pray, come to normal as God has designed it. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I pray over this neck. Every nerve fiber in his body, from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Be healed in Jesus' name. I pray for this back in Jesus' oh name. Be healed God, back. Oh, every so vertebrae. So Hallelujah. So every fiber, every nerve connected to this every back. Pain be gone in Jesus' name. I pray over his knees. I pray over his feet. I pray, God, that he'd have rest, God. When he lays down on his bed, God, that he'd stay asleep, God. Then he have peace, God, throughout the night, God. And when he wakes up, God, he's refreshed, God. Not waking up in just a moment. Not waking up, oh, God, overwhelmed. But waking up, Lord, in perfect peace, God. Oh, with a good night's rest, God. Eight hours. What would eight hours look like, God? Oh, for this man to sleep, God. Every night, God. Shakato. Oh. God, I pray, God, that ministry, God, continue to flow through him, God, that the anointing from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, the anointing that makes the difference, the anointing that destroys the yoke, God, prophecy flow through him, word of God flow through him, healing flow through him, God, in Jesus' name, that you'd be with Sister Sonia, God, that you protect over her, God, that you give her peace, God, that passes all and every understanding, God. God, that you'd minister to her, God. Healing, God. God, that you'd heal her mind, God. That you'd heal her heart, God. Bravo. Shake it. Peace of God. 
peace of God. Let it happen, God, today, God, that you bless the marriage. Touch John Caleb. <laughs> oh, God, wherever he's at right now, God, you go to him. Let him feel an overwhelming amount of your compassion on him right now. <laughs> fruit of the Lord God. Lord, this is their baby son, God. I know he's grown. He's a grown man, God. Bless him. Wrap your arms of love around him, God. <laughs> Draw him so close to you, God. Draw him so close, God. Let him feel you even now, God. Walk with him all the days of his life. Oh, my God, in Jesus, Jesus. This is their heart, God. This is their love, God. Touch John, Caleb, God, and Jesus. Bless him, Lord. Bless this family, God. Overshadow them, God, with your great love today. I thank you, Lord, for this man and woman of God. Lord, I thank you, God, for them and what they've been to me, God, in my life, God. Father, I speak blessings over them today, God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious oh, unto you. I will see Prosper you in everything that you put your hands to do. Bless this man and woman. Reward them, God, for their oh, faithfulness to you, God, I pray, God. In Jesus' name, you've been faithful to them, God. Continue to be faithful to them. Walk with them, God. Every day of their life, God. Jesus name, Jesus name, give them that peace. In Jesus name we pray, amen. Amen, 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 praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. I appreciate you today. I appreciate you being with us and staying with us throughout this day. I know that you've been blessed by Brother Phillips' ministry. Praise God. I've talked to him, and I, and I told him I, I want him to come run us a revival. I really do. And, uh, and when, when, when the Lord designs all that, praise God. Amen. He, he will come, and he will, he will pour himself out. I've, I've watched him do it. I've watched him walk in the pool pit, and the Lord just give him a word right then or change the word or just uh, and 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 I know that if if God designs him to come he's going to come he's come with a word today amen for this body and I'm thankful I'm thankful that we've been in the structure amen praise God but I'm ready for five I'm ready for the grace I'm ready for the people ready for the feeling the people coming of every culture every race every creed every tongue to mercy to mercy praise God hallelujah let me pray for you father lord I thank you God for the, your people today God father I pray God that you'd bless them lord minister to them God I pray God that everything that they're going through in their life right now God that you would walk with them God take them through it God heal their bodies God save their souls save their lost loved ones their sons their daughters God I pray God that you would strengthen them God and I pray God that you would bless them each and every day God Father I pray that they would have a great week Lord that you would bless their week that you would walk with them God every step they take God I pray God that you'd bless them minister to them Father I pray God would bring them back tonight God as we come in prayer God and I just ask you, Father Lord, to do your work, God, and your will in this house, God. Not only in this house, God, but God in this county, in this city, in this state, in our nation and in this world, God. I'm asking you, Father, for a great, great awakening that would start here and flow from this place, God. Something we've never seen, God. We've only read about, God. We've only heard about God. Let it happen here, God. If you're looking for a place, God, here we are, God. 
Help us, God, to receive it in Jesus' name. God. Jesus' name, God. Go with your people today. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. God bless you as you go. I love you. Shake somebody's hand. Tell them you love them as you leave today.